to the Upholstery Show, live from Arlington, Massachusetts. We're going to serve you up a beautiful bowl of coconut fiber. Really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's go with the coconut fiber. <laughs> there you go, Dad. That never gets old. We love Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's not here today. He was here last week. Uh, but Jimmy is well into another online class. You guys should check it out. Daniel said, what's on the menu today, Dad? What did he say that? Yeah, more coconut fiber, Daniel, like usual. <laughs> Who said that live? Who said that? Daniel. Daniel, yeah. More. Uh, the only thing we serve. That restaurant doesn't have much of a menu. Actually, I was watching. I'm a Star Trek fan, Patrick. I meant to tell you, I was watching an old Saturday Night Live. Right. And it reminds me of a skit that they did with, uh, actually, William Shatner was, was actually the plane himself. And they had retired the Enterprise and turned it into a rotating restaurant. <laughs> that was hilarious. At least I thought it was funny. But anyhow. So not much on the menu there at the Coconut Fiber Cafe. But uh, maybe we can add things. If Jimmy's watching, maybe he can uh, suggest a couple of more things. More batting in the way of batting, maybe. We should have a whole menu about upholstery, right, Patrick? Speaking of which, we're now selling horse hair. That's, sites, that's, that's right. Great. I don't know. Are we ever going to sell coconut fiber? Probably not, right, Pat? We grow our own tree, maybe. I don't know. No, I don't think so. In honor of Jimmy, we might maybe bring a couple of fibers in, just maybe as a, a gift or something. Although but you said we weren't going to sell horse hair, and we are now, so we I think know. we have to. I, I, a lot of the times on my videos when I find horse hair, it's like finding a treasure. And actually, if you do purchase new horse hair, it's, it's completely clean. It's actually a fabulous batting, as you know from what I've talked about. Um, you know, people who do commercial work, but ooh, ooh, I'm crazy, but they're doing a lot of polyurethane. Uh, nothing wrong with polyurethane. Uh, actually, we're going to be talking a little bit about that because uh, one of our subscribers and one of our online people too, right, Patrick? Yep. Erica has asked about some questions about ordering online, and we're going to get to that in a minute, I guess. But uh, horse hair for traditional furniture, yeah, uh, for sure. If you can afford it, grab some, buy some. Wash some, whatever you want to do. I mean, it's, it's, it's good. Just make sure you don't wash coconut fiber. And we know all about that, right, Patrick? No, all too much. <laughs> all right, well. The and Daniel that says, all the chairs on Star Trek look sweet. Do they not? Oh, you know what? I, I noticed that Trek. too, Daniel. Yeah, I, I was watching, you know, I was watching one from 87. This is the next generation. But even the old ones had some cool upholstering. And, you know, maybe we should do something with that, Patrick. Well, you see if you can get your hands on one of the pieces on the set. Well, oh, kind of... You know what? If anybody out there in <laughs> Star Trek land or Trekkie or something has a chair that was on the set, I don't care when it was on, uh, that would be cool. That would be cool, wouldn't it, Patrick? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to keep our eyes open. But he's right. I, was, I noticed a scene last night when uh, Picard came on board an old ship that had been out floating out there for nine years and he came out. You know what the first thing he did? He went to his chair and he went like this to his chair. <laughs> Captain Cook. I mean Captain Picard. Do you believe that? I thought that was hilarious. We should have free, uh, freeze framed that Patrick <laughs> and asked for permission to use it. Yeah. Anyhow, don't get me going on Trekkie. I'm a Trekkie. What can I say? Um, Patrick probably didn't know that. Uh, of course I did. Did you? Yeah. Um, anyhow, so I'm going to uh, well, get... Uh, Michaela, before, before we forget, read those first two. Yeah, I'm going to read some questions already. From we Erica. have some questions live even before we're on. So, yeah. Erica. Um, Erica asks, I need to order my foam cushion wrapped in Decor Enamel. How do I measure for correct fit? Use the exact measurements of the cushion. Is the foam cut larger or smaller to the measurements? I definitely, in most cases, use the exact measurement of my of the cover, and we Daycron wrap it so the Daycron makes up the difference. Now, sometimes on fabrics, I I, I go a little bit more on the foam, but you for sure you go to the same size. And of course, the thickness is important. And so, if you're going to order these online, if you've never ordered them on at BroadwayUpholsterySchool.com, we've made it as easy as we can. Um, and what you do is you, you go to the site. We have it classified as sofa cushions and chair cushions, pretty much. And you go to um, which one you have, and then it'll, it, you'll have to input the thickness, which gives you the cost, pretty much. And then um, there'll be a space in the message board there to give you the rest, to put in the rest of the measurements. So just put in the exact measurements. 
and uh, how many you need. I don't know how many you're looking for. You didn't mention that, but obviously that's a that's a section too that you have to fill out. And um, that's it. it. We made it easy. We're only offering one foam, and I believe 100% in the mid ultra foam, 2.6 density, fire Cal 117 graded. It's the best foam, most universal foam out there. Um, if you have seat, if you have back cushions that you insist on having soft foam on, we can always make special orders and still use. Uh, we would have to walk you through that on special orders. We can walk you through the process online on that, or you can call us direct, but we'd rather have you do it online. So I hope that answers your question, Erica. Is there another one? Uh, just a comment. We have a comment. She says, this is Erica again, I also ordered some supplies last night, rubber horse hair and the cotton cane brick. I don't want to use much foam under the decking, just using cotton and horse hair because it doesn't age well. This is all for the mid-centered couch I'm doing that looks a lot like your Davenport, trying to keep the lines lean and like the original. Yeah, she's got it right. She's, she's, Erica's paying attention and she's taking those online classes and that Davenport does have beautiful lines. It's a very well-constructed piece. Um, and remind people that it is for sale at the shop, but Erica's in Seattle, right, Patrick? Yeah. So um, I, don't th I don't think, well, we do ship anywhere in the world, though, don't we? Yeah. But uh, shipping costs, as you guys know, would be expensive for something like that. Well, we're looking forward to seeing Erica soon on, our, on the Zoom class. We already set that up. So. so that's great. So we got the Zoom classes. We got a lot going on. We got the Broadway Upholstery School Forum, which has cooled down a little bit. Uh, we have to get Jimmy in there maybe to uh, talk more about coconut fiber to get that heated up a little bit, right, Patrick? <laughs> yeah. Or something. Either that, or everybody's done with their projects. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what would really spark interest would be a start, one of those, I hate to bring it up again, Daniel, but Daniel and I are on the same page with that. Captain Kirk's uh, sh chair from Star Trek would kind of heat things up, wouldn't it, Patrick? Yeah, of course. The closest thing I think that we did was that theater chair, Patrick. Oh, yeah, that was cool. So we did a theater chair. I bet the theater chair was in the, when the Star Trek movies came out. So I, at least <laughs> that's the closest we we have got to one of the Star Trek chairs, though. That's funny. Um, so I'm going to get... We're going to get to this a little later. This this is interesting. We had somebody ask us some business advice from uh, out the Midwest part of the country. Was asking about. Um, well, I'll get to that in a minute, but it, it's tied into what you see up here, which is the kit that we offer at BroadwayUpholsterySchool.com, which comes with right, Patrick, all the supplies, mm -hmm. the hardwood frame, and the electronic or the hard copy or both, Patrick. Well, I, I think it's either the option, but you yeah. know, electronics are always much easier. Yeah, I think so. You can download the electronics. electronics. But this was, uh, I, uh, this was a book that I, I did myself, <clears throat> and it has all the instructions, the basic instructions. I'm not sure. I think Daniel's a little bit more advanced. He might just like it from a standpoint, you know, people who are advanced and they're upholsters. I've had upholsters enjoy this. Just pick it up and look at it. Um, but but it's uh, how many pages has it been so long? Copyrighted? Can you believe it? In 1991, you guys, I can't believe it's that long ago. But you know that's what I like about upholstery. Uh, you know the basics. You know there's no other better way. Um, we'll talk about this in a little while. I wanted to get to the questions and comments first, and unless there's any more live. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to get to. Um, this is a comment on YouTube. This is how how to upholster dining room chair part three padding and upholstery on the seat. And Jean says, I really appreciate that you share your skills with upholstery. I really enjoy your tips of the trade. May I ask what size staples you're using in this particular video? I'm pretty sure I was using three eighth inch staples. There's only three. There's the quarter, the three eighth, and the one half inch. Actually, I. I don't use the, I used a quarter inch uh, the other day, yesterday, I can't get to the chair out, but I don't use that that much, but I use it on a panel, upholstering a panel on the front of a, a wing chair. So um, I think on that particular chair I used all three size staples. So that's interesting. You know, the half inch, the three eighth went working in some areas, so I switched to the half inch, but mostly three eighth. So uh, you're, go you're, you're going back and forth, but for the most part, the 3 8 stays in the gun and that does most things. Um, but that's a good question. Um, and somebody just purchased one of these 
guns that we offer, Patrick. Yeah. Staple gun, you guys. Not yeah, really. A staple. Put a little confusion with that on Facebook. Really. Yeah, yeah, Patrick advertised the, the staple gun on Facebook, and they took it down, did they, Patrick? Yeah, it's sort of a weapon. Uh, oh, you keep, is it still that? Yeah, enough? I could test it, and they put it back up. Oh, okay. Like, well, you got to be kidding me. Well, you know, the half-inch staples, those are pretty... <laughs> It can't be that sensitive. Right? That's pretty funny. That well, look, you know what? It's nice to. I guess it's nice to know people are are watching, <laughs> right, Patrick? <laughs> Big brother is watching. Um, so the next question, question two, is from Janine. Hi, Janine. Janine's been a great supporter of ours, Patrick. I think right from the get go, right? Yeah. How long do you think Janine has been uh, supporting us? Oh, I don't know. And she's I, from Australia. Yeah. And, um, from the, from the, as soon as we started making videos. As soon as we started doing the YouTube videos. That's 10 years ago. Maybe. <laughs> wow. So there goes our local Arlington Fire Department. We'll say a little prayer for them. Uh, always do that when you see a fireman. Say a little prayer because you never know where they're going. Eric yeah, uh, just said to, to, to saying that uh, the book has helped her a lot. Really? Yeah. Oh, she had the book. She has the book. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. I'm glad. That, that took a long time to do that. Many, many hours. Um, thank you for the nice nice compliment. So, Janine is commenting on the A.H. Davenport Repair Part 2. You know, we have this, if you haven't seen the videos, this is just strictly a repair, just to get a kind of showroom or presenting in a, in a like a consignment store or where we have it. I couldn't put it in the window the way it was. If you guys have seen it, the springs were hanging out and there were tears here and there, but we were fortunate enough to have some extra fabric with that when it was given to us. You know, it was going to be thrown away. The customer just couldn't bear the thought of throwing her mother's, his mother's sofa out. So he called us and we took advantage of it and grabbed it. We hope that it sells. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of furniture. As they say, it's got good bones. But anyhow, I like what Janine says. She says, it will be interesting to see what the purchaser does with this couch. She says, she goes on to say, great tips on the totting up the couch. I like that. That, that I think, if Janine can uh, correct me, Daniel's from Ireland though, right, Patrick? No, John. Is, John. is John watching? I don't know. I don't well, think so. I'll tell you why, because I think totting up, I think that's an, uh, either an English expression or an Irish expression, or it could be Australian, but I like it. I like that, totting up, Patrick. Yeah. That's what we did on that sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, we have another comment about pricing in the upholstery business. I liked and enjoyed that doing that, that Patrick. Yeah, it was a good one. And how many? We got another one. We still got that one. We have to do about um, uh, how to run your own shop. So that's coming soon. Yeah, I, I'm a little afraid to give all my secrets away with that, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind though. I I give a lot. As you guys know, you, you've seen the free. I mean, there are people watching who will never subscribe. Or we'll be on the YouTube forever. Well, that's fine. You know, we're, we're all about, um, I think this is one of the coolest things about the YouTube channel is what we're doing with our YouTube channel. I can't speak for other YouTube channels, but when I hear from people, and you'll hear from somebody today about tied into this ottoman, but when I hear from people who have made a little cottage industry out of my videos and they had enough confidence to start getting paid and making a little money and sometimes that little money is enough to support a family and children too. I mean we, we got a call, remember that woman who's out in the Midwest Patrick who yeah. said she started doing a little upholstery based on you know and she had she was a single mother. Yeah that's very cool. We always love stories like that right? Yeah send the stories about I really want to hear that you know and then my favorite is that the English uh, company that opened and they decided to do upholstery and they had a fellow that was struggling a little bit and they gave him the uh, how to eight way hand tie video and if you can learn how to do this we'll hire you and sure enough they hired him. I you know things like that if you guys have those stories please send them in any way any way you, you can. I'd like to hear that. Anyhow uh, so so um, Landa says grass uh, oh, gracias. Oh, gracias. <laughs> oh my, I did take some Spanish. But she says this, gracias, 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 and then four exclamation points. I bet, I bet that video really helped her. What do you think, Patrick? I don't know, it's hard to tell. 
<laughs> I think she's saying more in that thank you than, than meets the eye. I think we might have taught, didn't somebody else comment? I don't know if it's in here. I don't think you have it in here. Somebody did comment, maybe an email to me, about how helpful that was for them um, and that they realized they weren't getting enough money. And I hear that a lot with all types of trades people. A lot of times we undercut ourselves and don't do that, you know, um, if you can help it. I mean, sometimes the demographics really do, it depends on where you are, actually, obviously, what, what economic situation um, your community might be in, um, but then you extend your, your reach when that happens. But I think that you need to find a livable wage. You need to make sure that you have a livable wage. So that means, uh, I've never had anybody say, I think I'm getting too much for my work. I never had that happen. But um, you can ask for too much and not get the job too, so that's a little tricky. And that's what we talked about, right Patrick? Yep. We talked a lot about, how long was that video? 30 minutes, I think. Wow, I didn't think it was even that long. That's great. So let's go on to the next uh, question, uh, unless there's some live questions. Okay, don't forget you guys, that's why we're here. This was designed, this question and answer, Patrick, was designed for the people taking the online classes. Yep. And I, I can't think I'm doing that much of a good job that nobody has any questions about that. Maybe we're doing a good job on that because this was designed so like a follow-up for people who were watching uh, the videos. Yep. And uh, let's, let's talk about the online classes, Patrick. I mean, we've got a lot of students uh, signed up. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a lot of content. I think the favorite is the yearly subscriptions uh, because I think they have the best value. I really do because we've got how many hours? I can't even I can't even count how many edited. I should say that you guys don't give Patrick yeah, nearly, all, the, all the stuff that you and Jimmy going off on the tangents. Edit it out. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, I can't <laughs> I can't believe the work that goes into this, you guys. It's easy for me. I just sit in front of the camera and act dopey, right, and teach my trade. Patrick and Michaela are the ones that are doing the editing. I have to tell you something. That tedious, long work. It's it's not just put on the camera. And you probably have seen videos. I bet there are videos up there where that's what they do, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Where there's no editing at all that's done. It's all raw and the camera angles. Maybe our first videos were like that. But, um, and it's, it's still not perfect in my opinion. No, no. And I, I think it comes with space and equipment. And I there's, think your talent is there, though, for there's sure. There's still times where I worry that hopefully... The students are okay with the camera angles. They can see everything properly. Sometimes well, we know we Wall Street's tough with the angles, especially when the student is doing it. And, you know, we we know that when a student is working, I don't want a student to compromise their body English to get a good shot because that, that's how you get hurt. Now, I do it. I can do it, uh, but I wouldn't want somebody else to do it. Um, so often, sometimes you get the back, you get their back, but that's where a good editing job comes in. And also, while we're working with the student, I'm aware of the angles too. Like we, we had an instance with Jimmy just yesterday where I, I actually had to turn the piece to show on camera. I'll do that a lot to help try to help Patrick a little bit. Because we have three camera angles, but still sometimes that's not enough either. I mean, it's not a Hollywood studio. <laughs> right, Patrick? Yeah. It's probably better that it isn't a Hollywood studio anyhow. Um, so Suzanne comments on uh, fixing a pop button for free. And, you know, I, I notice when you put free on any video, Patrick, you get a lot of people watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so she's asking, and I think she's, she called me, so I hope she's watching. And I, She said, does this work for a button that has come out of a bed mattress? So it's a, different, it's a little different on a bed mattress because you've got a button on both sides. It's like having a cushion with buttons. And so you need, a, you need a, not the, um, that one there, I'm not sure if we used a curved needle, I mean a uh, German needle, I'm not sure. But what you need for a mattress is a long button needle, about 12 inches long. You need a long, the twi nylon twine, which you'd cut about two yards long. And the button, uh, you need to have the two old buttons, or some, some mattresses have the cotton, the little cotton ball, it's an old mattress. Either way, you need, to string, you need to string the button, and then you need to string it through, both ends through the, the needle, and then you need to bring the needle right through the mattress, 
so that the ends of the the ends are coming out the other side your buttons on one side and then you need to tie the slip knot onto the other button and we have a video about this right Patrick yep we have a slip knot video so you can you can just look at that and slow the slow it down to get that to get that uh, you know perfect but yeah um, not quite the same technique as what we show here in fixing a pop button. Not quite. No, not at all. I mean, this button does, it's only one side. So the button's only on the front of the sofa. And we use either a clasp or my invention of that washer because we did two videos. I'm not sure which one this is. Um, and then you, you do the slip knot from the front. And then that's how, and then you clip the, th the ends off. And you, and you got your fixed project. Something like that, you guys. An upholsterer might charge you $200 for that. So if you can learn how to do that, if you've got that problem, I'm mean, talking about, I guess I'm talking to the average homeowner right now. Um, I'm sure there are pop buttons across the world that need to be fixed, right, Patrick? Sure. <laughs> Especially with the quality of furniture nowadays. Right? I know. <laughs> um, so our, our, our friend Aril from India, he comments on the upholstery show live. Is he watching right now, Patrick? I'm not sure, but because of the time change today, All right. this week, I mean. What combination of fabric lasts longer in durability and comfort levels, the soft feeling? Well, the, the best wearing fabric that was ever made in the history of the world was mohair. Goat, goat skin. I mean, mohair, I've seen, prod, I've seen furniture done in mohair 150 years old. Um, it's, it's an incredible, incredible material and it's very soft. So that's the answer now is mohair. Mohair is soft and very, very durable. So there you go. Uh, so the next one, uh, this is the Upholstery Show Live. This is from Janine. She says, great information tonight. Thank you. You know, I don't sometimes remember what we talk about. This was last week, Patrick, but uh, thank you, Janine. I, I can't, what, what did we talk about last week? We had Jimmy on. Yeah, so it felt like something crazy. We were <laughs> no, I don't think we went on. I think we were on subject a lot last week, weren't we? Yeah, yeah reel, reel you guys in when you're together. I know. <laughs> but we were, we were on subject. I think we talked a lot about upholstery, and that's what Janine's commenting on. Sometimes Jimmy draws me out, and you know, with the upholstery. Well, I know that we must have made an impact. Oh, this is, um, you know what got a lot of uh, uh, hits, Patrick? Right, the wing chair. Yeah, do you know how many, I mean, you don't like telling me how many hits these things get, but well, we know something's popular is when right away people start commenting, and there's two comments that I'll read to you about that, and, and, they're, and they're usually positive. Um, so this one from Terry, uh, she says, excellent information. Um, I think what makes that excellent, on, at least um, Terry, is the, is the fact that it was a small wing chair, and I could I could talk about angles and everything, and I could I could lift it up and show you. I always I love the story, you know, when I was teaching. The first time I ever taught upholstery, I I asked people to close your eyes and put the piece of furniture in your mind that you're upholstering, and I was shocked because this is something that I can do. I was shocked to find out that not everybody can do that. I, you know, I was young, so I didn't know. I think I did a little study on it. I think about eight or nine percent of the population can actually put an image in their head, and so most people couldn't do that. So I was, I was trying to make a point anyhow. The point I was trying to make is before you tackle a project, you might want to think about it a little bit more. So I just had to re, restructure how I was teaching, that's all, but it wasn't a bad thing. But um, as far as the cuts go, and and about how it's such a three-dimensional and blind, it's a lot of times you're blind when you're making the cuts. It's such, it, it, from all the years of experience teaching, that is the thing that people have the hardest time with. That's where they're most anxious. And I have a live question. Uh, this is from Gabrielle. Hi, Gabrielle. Hi, from Cincinnati. What Hi. did they use before Cambridge? Is there another choice? I like the look that, better that I find on old pieces. So there are two different, three different types. There's Celestra, which is what I use a lot, not on antiques, but for most of my furniture, which is black. And it has great flexibility. That's why I like using it. It's easier to work. 
The other one, the antique, they call it an antique cambric, is like a cotton cloth. Is, I mean a cloth. And that's, that's actually hard. That's like upholstering the bottom of the chair. You need to be real careful cutting around the, uh, the legs. On the Celestra, sometimes you don't even have to cut it. You just pleat it around the leg. That's what I like about it. Then the third thing on, on like really dainty like French furniture, they used to use muslin. They used to use the white muslin for the bottom. And here's a little history, and I know with Google I get in trouble sometimes with, with my facts, but cambric, the fourth, the fourth application for cambric was in the Victorian era. A piece of the clothing on the lapel was actually called cambric, C-A-M-B-R-I-C. -I, I suspect that it was more like a muslin, like, like um, the um, French would use. And then somehow that, that came off the Victorians and went to the bottom of a piece of furniture. I don't know how that happened. But it's interesting that it, there's at least, and then some people use decking fabric. They'll, they'll take, or sometimes people just use um, fabric left over that's dark. Keep this in mind though, one of the qualities of the cambric and the celestra is that it's non-porous. Uh, for the most part. What that means is that dust, it's a dust catcher, remember that. So if you put burlap, and I've seen burlap on piece, on the bottom of pieces too, so there's another one. <laughs> so there's a lot. Burlap is as porous as you can get, so it's going to happen over the years. It's not, a, that's not a Dutch uh, dust collector at all, so um, as a matter of fact it might be drawing in dust, the, 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 the uh, burlap. But anyhow, it's pretty interesting uh, that you should ask that. Is there anything else live? Um, no, just a comment. Uh, I think it was... Can you read it? <laughs> it says, this is from Daniel. I hey, think, Daniel. I thought Kevlar was the sturdiest. I think it was a conversation in between on the... Oh yeah, well Ke Kevlar, oh it was an in-between conversation, yeah, yeah. He, I think Anel was asking what, he asked a good question and I didn't think I was going to have an answer for it, but I did. He was asking the most durable and the softest, softest material, which definitely the mohair is it. So when you're talking about other fibers that aren't soft, most of the times when you're talking durable, I don't think you're talking soft. You're talking, uh, you're talking, you know, almost coarse. That's, that's my, you know, that's what I think. Anyhow, so we have another question, the last question um, that we have. Oh, no, I think there's another one beyond this. Not the last one. Yeah, but I, I have one from Lisa that I want to talk oh, about right. the autumn. But this is the last one from the YouTube, right, Patrick? Yeah. This is, um, this is also the wing chair post cut. That's a perfect chair to make a deconstructed chair. They are beautiful, and they give modern look to those types of chairs. I just finished two and I relied on many of your videos to do the upholstery. Thank you for these videos. Well, there you go. Let me tell you, uh, there, there's a lot of hours that we put into this. If I, if I ever had to sit down and figure out how many hours we put in, including the online classes, Patrick, mm -hmm. I, I'd say we've done as many hours as we have subscribers. I, I have no problem saying that, Patrick. Right. right? So we've got 11,000 subscribers. That's pretty interesting. I think for every hour of video, we might, if we're lucky, have one subscriber. And, and you know, while I'm thinking about it, you guys, please, we check the subscribers. Patrick gets a kick out of telling me, hey, we, we just got 100 subscribers, or we got so many just subscribers. It's what keeps us ticking and, and keeps us excited and engaged so that we can present more of the YouTube classes, the, the live classes, and the online classes. And you know, we never know where this will goes. We have talked about doing seminars across the country, Patrick. Mm -hmm. We're not sure about if that's once the once the world returns to normal. Once the world returns to normal, it'd be great to get out there, travel around, and just without masks on, and just talk about upholstery and all the good things in life, right? But we have to really think about if that's feasible. I'm not sure if it is, but um, people uh, do it. Our friend John. Said, why don't you come to Ireland and do one of those? <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, that would be fun. Yeah, but you know, we'll see. But there's, there's a lot. There's a lot going on, and I think that it kind of segues into the next thing that I'm, I want to talk about. 
about your business and about also this future video that we want to do about how to run a business or how to promote your business or how to keep your business going, how to manage your business. Man, there's so many aspects to, to running a small business. Um, one of the hardest things is just to keep the flow of the work going and, and not, you know, you can, you can get, you know, if you, if you just have the analogy of a drain pipe and, and, you, and you get stuck on a project and, and all the projects are backing up, you know, the drain pipe's backed up, that can happen very easily in, a, in upholstery. You have to be careful on what jobs you take. Sometimes it's tempting to take a job that might have a little money and you think it's great, but it might not be great for that flow. So we're going to talk a lot about that in that video, Patrick. But so we had a question. It kind of it, it's a great segue to this question um, that we were excited when we saw this. We love, I guess uh, you know, we love giving free advice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What do they say about free advice? It's cheap. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Something. Still advice. So, um, this woman says, "My name is Lisa, and I own a small business that refinishes, repairs, and reupholsters furniture. We are looking to grow our team, especially our upholstery department. This appears to be a dying trade, and I'm trying to be creative as a look for individuals to train, grow, and employ." Your program, Broadway Upholstery School, looks very interesting, and I wondered if you might have any advice as we seek to attract and employ upholsterers. Thanks so much for your time, and look forward to hearing from you. I have included a link to our website. She goes on, but this is a great. I uh, this is great, and I I had the perfect answer for her, and I don't have the answer here, but I I'll just tell you what I said to her. It's tied into this. So if you if you're good enough to be upholstering on your own, even with my videos, you're good enough to teach class. So my advice to this business owner was, <clears throat> she can she could teach a class, do it in a community setting, like uh, when, when things settle down, or she could do Zoom classes too, actually now at this point. She could teach Zoom classes, she can get going right on it, but I, I think what, what you could do, what she could do, this specific person, is uh, she would be attracting people already interested in upholstering. So if she gets 10 people to take an upholstery class, she can identify a future employee at, at the same time, you know, teaching a class, making a little money and promoting her business. I mean, talk about a win-win-win. Um, and at this time, I wouldn't let the pandemic stop us, although I will say that the greatest, the best venue that you have in your community, at least in this country, I can't speak of other countries, in this country, uh, they're mandated to have adult education classes at night. And I've talked about this before, but it's worth talking again. Um, these are classrooms that are available. They have the lighting, the plumbing, the heating, the air conditioning. It's all there for you. You just have to come up with a, a class to teach that people will take. And I have to tell you, these very popular classes, upholstery classes, so if you are an advanced upholsterer, you don't need any of this. But if you're if you're a beginner or a journeyman, the BroadwayUpholsterySchool.com has a complete kit, and you could buy one and then and then be creative with your supplies and, and offer it, you know, uh, and the framework and everything else. Or you can purchase uh, the people can purchase the kit uh, in your class, and you could get paid for teaching. I mean, it's it's a great opportunity. And if you had Zoom classes, Patrick, they're not that, a Zoom conference is not that hard to set up for your business. No. So I wouldn't be waiting. Uh, if I owned a business and I was looking for employees or customers or create a buzz, man, you talk about, you need to create a buzz in this. This, this a lot of people right now <coughs> who are at home, um, if you have a business which you can do this, um, I mean, I find that I need to create a buzz almost every single day that I'm in business, one way or the other. I need to create something. I mean, I don't manufacture things, but, you know, for instance, <clears throat> we had John Belushi's actual sofa in, in the shop. So I thought that would make a great local. Did we have a cable TV come in here, right, Patrick? And yeah, did a little. Did. I thought, cool. yeah, the cable TV came in, and we're partners with them, and they came in and did a little segment on John Belushi's sofa and things like that. I mean, I mean, don't overlook the simple stories too. Uh, in your, if you have a shop, or if you're doing work for somebody, or even your own story. I had somebody come in here the other day talking about, and I love this, talking about the chair that she that she brought to me 
she was shown little drawings that she made. She was, she was an older woman when she was very young. She was showing me another stain that the, the grandfather's cigar made on the, on the chair. It's a wooden arm chair. And she showed me where her, where her brother did something, took a hammer to the, to the wood uh, on another spot. But she has a story for almost every flaw. And then wouldn't you know, the husband, the husband says to me, I, after I talk about the fabric and the labor, she's going to give me the work. The husband says, now let's talk about, what, what, are you going to refinish? Are you going to put anything on the, on, the, on the wood, anything to refinish it? I said, absolutely not. I think that was the right answer. <laughs> right, Patrick? Yeah. I think if I had said, let's strip it down, take all your wife's drawings away. <laughs> now that I think of it, I think he was testing me, Patrick. Yeah, that would have been good. Which brings up another funny story that I, that I had about sales. You know, and I hope, hopefully I'll get into what salesmanship um, is all about, too, when you're selling. I mean, you're really selling yourself, aren't you, when you're going out to a sales call. But I have a funny story to relate to you, Patrick. You'll like this one. <clears throat> I, got a, I got a call from a gentleman, and I mentioned it to another upholsterer. I was, I'm going to go see this guy. He's got a lot of work for me. And that upholsterer said to me, ah, I'm doing you a favor. Do not do work for this guy. He's the hardest customer. He's going to complain about everything. He's a real jerk. Don't get it. Whatever you do, do not. I already set up the appointment, right? And he said, don't, don't. He, he's going to make your life miserable. He made, this guy had done work for him, and the guy was just really mean, I guess, or something. So I said, oh, boy, I don't think I want this job. So I went to the house, and um, the, the man seemed okay, and I'm, I'm starting to write out the estimate, and I'm, I'm doubling every price. I'm doubling every price. Are you listening to this? Yeah, <laughs> you know, he had a lot of work too. I'm doubling, doubling, doubling. And then I present it. He says, you got to be kidding me. I said, well, you know, I guess you're not going to do the work. He says, well, I didn't say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so then, then I said, oh, man. Then, then he starts to hedge that he wants to do the work. He starts asking me for less, more money off. I said, I can't do it. He said, okay. I'll do it, and then, then I start to panic. And then, you know, honesty is the best policy, right? And I, I said to him, <laughs> Patrick, you're not going to believe this. I said to him, you know, I really don't want your work. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he, he, he started to laugh. I really don't think I ever said that. He started to laugh. And I said, no, I'm serious. I, I don't want your work. I, it's okay. I, I, don't, I don't want your work. I'm too busy. I don't want your work. And he said, oh, that's hilarious. He was, he was starting to laugh even more. You know what he said to me, Patrick? He said he was a salesman uh, for 50 years, and he had never heard that sales pitch before. I said to him, I'm not kidding you. I really don't want your work. And he started laughing even more. <laughs> I actually did the job. I got the job. I did the work, and he was—he wasn't so bad. Wow! You know, I can't believe it. Isn't that funny? Exactly. I know. Honestly. Well, I was—I finally had to be honest with him, you know. But anyhow, that was my story. So, I think I talked. Uh, is there anything else on the forum, Patrick? No, not this week. I, I wanted to show a little project that I have, and, and maybe try to repair it. Um, on, on. We got time. Uh, like Daniel says he agrees to buy the book so you don't make the same mistakes I did in the beginning. They're very expensive if you don't have anyone telling you to do this. Yeah, mistakes can be expensive, especially when it comes to mohair. It's $400 a yard, right? So I had a, a customer bring me this chair, which is a child's high chair. And there's nothing wrong. This is Naga hide, not real leather. But they, um, they don't want me to tear this apart, so I'm going to try to repair it from the bottom. So my idea is, I'm going to flip this over, I'm going to see, um, I'm going to put a piece of one inch foam in here, which is about the thickness of the wood on the bottom to the top of the webbing. And then I'm going to take my webbing. This is a very inexpensive repair for the customer. They love these repairs, as long as you tell them what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. You want to be fair, right? Oh, so, you know, honesty, right, you guys? This customer, it doesn't matter how much money people have. That doesn't matter to me. It could be, they could be Donald, somebody coming in. <laughs> or, or one of the big billionaires, right, Patrick? Yeah. 
That would be crazy. That'd be a but video. But that doesn't mean your honesty goes out the window. So I could have sold, I probably could have sold on doing all these tax and getting antique tax and doing it from the top. Um, that would have been three times as much money, at least. But I felt compelled to give them both options and why I felt it would be better for the chair to do it from the bottom. So it's really a lot less money, but you know, I think, you know, if you're in business for the long term, you guys, you're going to get a happier customer and a happier business if, you, if you're if you honest in the beginning and you keep going like that, you get good reviews and people talk. I mean, still, you know, we live in a social media world, you think, but there's still a lot of uh, by, by word of mouth, right, Patrick? Yep. Don't ever be fooled by social media is the only place to pay for a good review, and people do pay for good reviews. Pay a lot of money for good reviews. You don't have to do that. Just just be honest, you know. So something like this, I would I probably get more legs by being honest with somebody more more in the long run than I do if I got three times for that piece, you know. So I just wanted to mention that. Put this in here. Let's just get one piece of webbing on here first because I just want to see what's going on on the other side. So I'm not committing to the whole seat. I'm not committing to the whole thing right. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to stretch this. Get our webbing stretcher. Stretch. And the staples came off. That's not good. I don't have it folded over yet because I don't want to commit to the webbing yet. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Right? So I want this stretch drum tight. Let's take a look at this. Cut this. Yeah, that might work out good. That's going to work out good when I put the rest of the webbings on. So let's do that. Let's put the rest of the webbings on. So the reason I only did one is because at that point, if I felt it needed more, I might be able to slide like some Dacron or some cotton underneath. I wouldn't do cotton, I'd do Dacron uh, to give it a little bit more pattern. But we're, we're good. And now I'm going to go, somebody had a question about the staples. I'm going to go to a bigger staple because my staples, I'm going to go to a half inch staple because my staples were 3 8 inch in there. They weren't working so hard. Now I'm going to fold this over. Questions, uh, feel free to interrupt Michaela. Somebody said, do you ever get bored uh, working on upholstery? And I said, if you have an imagination, you, you don't get bored, right? And I think, I think upholstery have to have an imagination because there are long periods of solitude, right? So, you know what I was just thinking when I was doing this? I was quiet. For, you guys were probably liking it. I was quiet for a minute. Um, I was thinking about how old this chair is, which is probably about 100 and, 150 years old. And I was thinking, how many generations have been sitting on this chair? That's what I was thinking. It's been in the family all that time. So what's that? Uh, 150 years is what, two? Seven generations? Eight generations? 
So um, if, if you're thinking those things around furniture, what makes people happy? You know, think about uh, Jean-Luc Picard when he goes over to his chair and he just like touches it. Like that's the first thing he touched when he came back to his old ship. That's funny, isn't it? I suppose if he was uh, out there in the ocean when he went to his cabin and he had a captain's chair in his cabin, he probably would have done the same thing, right? So there you go. That's why I don't get bored. Right, Patrick? Exactly. <laughs> So while I'm upholstering this, I'm, I'm on the Starship Enterprise, looking to see how I can upholster the chair. Right, Pat? <laughs> what was that uh, video we did, Pat? The world's biggest sofa, and you had me up. Uh, you had the sofa up yeah, in space. In space yeah. yeah, that was a good one. Gabrielle says, I saw some of the conversation about the coconut fiber, but I never figured out if it could be washed. You said no, don't wash it, right? No, don't don't wash it. Jimmy has a Halloween story to tell about that, right Patrick? <laughs> Let's turn this over to see how we're doing on this. Very good, look at that. It's almost as good as new. So, um, I think unless there's some more questions, Patrick, or is this a good place to stop? Sure. I think we, we covered a lot of, uh, everything that was asked. Everything that was asked. There's a little bit of a lull in the questions on, on the forum, so we asked people if you want, go on the forum, Poultry on Broadway forum, and ask your questions. And just post your projects, you know? Yeah, we, we have... what you're working on. We always show it off on the Q&A. Yeah, we love the projects that people are doing posting on online. Um, so. Without Jimmy, it's a little bit of a drag, isn't it, Pat? <laughs> no, it was good. It's always good. It's always good. It's always good. So thanks a lot, you guys, and we'll see you next question and answer live. Thanks.